When most of us think of the Middle East and Saudi Arabia, we think of the scorching sun, endless oceans of sand dunes, and one of the most inhospitable climates on Earth. However, in recent news, Saudi Arabia is turning its hot deserts into lush green oases. But how are they doing it? Is this even possible? Let's find out. With a gigantic 2 million square kilometers of land area, Saudi Arabia ranks as the 14th largest nation overall. However, 95% of the kingdom is a scorching arid desert with a ton of sand. Additionally, it is one of the rare nations without even a single permanent river. But if you observe the country now, you'll discover something completely unexpected, arable land. In the harsh desert, sources claim that Saudi Arabia has developed a network of farmlands where architecture flourishes and farms may harvest a wide variety of fruits. Additionally, you will see right away that the majority of the farmlands are circular. So how did the oil-rich kingdom multiply its arable land in such a short period? Well, although Saudi Arabia may have many sand dunes, things weren't always like that. A considerable rise in rainfall and the growth of lakes and vegetation in Arabia around 10,000 years ago helped to support human settlements all across the peninsula. However, a string of severe droughts in the millennia that followed caused profound changes in the ecology. After that, people continued to live in the sandy region. So while water is scarce on the surface, Saudi Arabia sits on a reservoir of water known as aquifers. This is similar to how the kingdom sits above massive amounts of crude oil. For years, Saudi Arabia has been extracting water from the earth, and the majority of this water has been used in agriculture, where extensive irrigation is allowed for planting and harvesting. Water pumping from underneath the ground does have one drawback, though. Aquifers may go dry, especially if they are used for extensive irrigation as Saudi Arabia has done. Saudi Arabia, therefore, acquired technology to conserve its water, and it has greatly improved things. This technology is called center pivot irrigation. But what is center pivot irrigation, and where did it come from? In 1948, the center pivot sprinkler system was created by a pioneering Nebraskan farmer named Frank Zabak. It was patented in 1952. Utilizing an automated irrigation system, center pivot irrigation entails maintaining a circular pattern around a central pivot to irrigate crops. Actually, this explains why Saudi Arabia's farmlands are round. Due to unstable food imports, Saudi Arabia initially tried to achieve agricultural self-sufficiency via strong government subsidies for farmers in the 1980s. Then in 2007, inadequate methods and poor water resource management required a redesign of these initiatives. Currently, the kingdom supports livestock farmers' use of synthetic feed and promotes greenhouse and drip-irrigated vegetable cultivation. These methods have increased the sustainability of the food supply while conserving water. Therefore, Saudi Arabia has employed technology to assist in making its agricultural business as efficient as possible, following disastrous attempts in the 1980s. The use of satellites to capture images of agriculture is one of the new tactics. Understanding the connection between crop growth and total water use is the goal of the thermal images that emerge. This makes it easier for farmers to analyze the water needs for various crops and determine which one would yield the most given a certain amount of water. Now, despite the threat that climate change brings to agriculture worldwide, the kingdom's varied climate gives it the perfect place to grow palm trees. The 33 million palm trees in the kingdom account for 27% of all palm trees in the globe. While 120,000 agricultural holdings produce 1.54 million tons of dates annually across 13 districts, the three most significant administrative regions for date production in the kingdom are represented by the cities of Qasim, al assad also known as the mother of palm trees, and Madna, which are situated in the country's center, east and west respectively. Second, in line with palm trees, is coffee beans. Coffee and dates are two iconic products and a famous Saudi combination. The Saudi principles of hospitality, music, and poetry are so deeply ingrained in coffee that it is acknowledged as a fundamental component of Saudi folklore. In terms of the quantity of coffee beans produced, Saudi Arabia is rated 50th in the world. While there are some coffee plantations in Al Baha and Abha, coffee crops are primarily found in Jazan. Coffee farming in the highland regions benefits greatly from the humidity, chilly climate, fertile soil, and complete reliance on seasonal rainfall. In addition to coffee, Jazan is renowned for its mango trees. For mangoes, the region was granted a geographical indication in 2018, a product name or sign that refers to a particular geographic place or origin. Mangoes are one of the distinguishing fruits of the area, and the success of the crop in the area is attributable to its good soil and plentiful groundwater. And of course, we cannot forget the kingdom's beloved olive basket on the northern borders. 
The northern Jaff region is Saudi Arabia's largest producer of olive oil and is home to enormous orchards with millions of plants due to its fertile soil and temperate temperature. The biggest olive farm in the world, located near Jaff, cranks out 10,000 tons of the finest olive oil every year. With 1,600 plants crammed into one hectare space, Jaff's olive trees are notable for their use of intensive planting techniques. More than 8 million olive trees can be found in this area. As a result, there has been a corresponding decrease in food imports. Saudi Arabia currently exports wheat, dates, dry products, eggs, fish, poultry, vegetables, and flowers to markets throughout the globe. In addition, extensive dairy, meat, poultry, and egg production has been implemented, and local farmers are now supplying the domestic market with a variety of goods that were previously imported. Currently, the kingdom is home to some of the biggest and most advanced dairy farms in the Middle East. Moreover, with one of the highest rates in the world, milk production boasts a remarkable annual rate of 1,800 gallons per cow. On the other hand, despite the fact that traditional offshore fishing has consistently increased fish production, the kingdom is looking for ways to boost its catch and encourage more private investment. Aquaculture is one of the newest industries in which the private sector is making investments with government assistance. There have been an increased number of fish farms using tanks on land or marine pens. The majority are found along the Red Sea coast of Saudi Arabia. In addition, growing shrimp has proven to be extremely profitable. For instance, the National Shrimp Company, Al Rabiun, operates a farm south of Jedha under the supervision of Saudi hydrobiologists and marine engineers. The company's shrimp, particularly the popular black tiger shrimp, are primarily shipped to the United States and Japan. Now, in light of the global fight against climate change, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman launched the Saudi Green Initiative in 2021, with more than SR 700 billion of investment in the growth of the green economy. This announcement has emphasized the initiatives and goals that would progressively transition the kingdom to use clean energy, safeguarding the environment, and improving it for coming generations. By 2030, 450 million trees will be planted as part of the effort, and 8 million hectares of degraded land will be restored. Additionally, in order to aid in the restoration of the kingdom's mangrove forest shoreline, 4 million mangrove trees have already been planted. In addition, the Green Program includes pledges to lower carbon emissions, combat pollution and soil erosion, safeguard marine life, and raise the proportion of protected areas in the nation. In conclusion, Saudi Arabia's improved farming techniques and technical development have contributed to the development of a more reliable domestic food supply in the kingdom. The Saudi government has directed its subsidies and programs toward more productive crops and endeavors, such as fish farming, after learning from its missteps in the 1980s. Additionally, it has turned away from the wastewater-related crops and growth techniques, while new cutting-edge technologies like center pivot systems offer optimism for the future of Saudi food security and sustainability. Technology like satellite utilization helps with existing Saudi output. The Saudi government has acknowledged this problem and is making a concentrated effort to restructure its architectural sector, even while imports currently make up the majority of its supplies. These initiatives have the potential to assist Saudi Arabia to avoid a serious food and poverty catastrophe in the future. And that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. We will be back soon with more amazing content, so stay tuned. And don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our latest updates. Thanks for watching.